Hey, 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 what's happening, guys? Welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you're joining us online. Um, if you are joining us today, you can actually join from YouTube, watch it on your TV. So you got the, your big screen in your living room or, you know, and you're hanging out watching with your family. You can actually also go on our Facebook Live. So we've got it brought up here. You can go on Facebook Live and use the chat feature on there and interact with everyone that's watching, um, interact with the message and everything like that while you are watching on your TV in your living room. Yeah, welcome, cool. man. We're so glad you're here. This is it's cool. Pentecost Sunday. We'll talk Pentecost about that in a minute. Sunday. But yes. I am, uh, my name's Clint Hendry. I'm the next gen pastor. I am Zach Day. I'm the operations assistant. Probably should have started with that. Yeah, yeah, Zach Day. All right, come <laughs> on. But hey, now you are now you know what to do with Facebook and, <laughs> and all go. that. Yeah, so hey, it's the middle of the board thing. But man, we're so glad you're here. Yes. It's an incredible day. We're continuing our series in the light. And yeah. as we mentioned, it's Pentecost Sunday. So, you know, we start we're talking on. about that. Just, uh, you know, Acts 2. Acts you 2, know, baby. When fire. Two. Come on. Jesus showed. God's spirit showed up. And uh, it's going to be an incredible day. We're expecting that same kind of day today as well. So make sure you stay tuned for an yes. incredible worship um, time and an incredible message by Pastor Brian, who was talking today about in the light as we're yes. looking at, uh, yep. at the yep. book of John. Still focusing so. on that, that sermon series. Now, yeah, today, man. we have a really cool guy that we want to introduce, right? Yes, yes. We want to introduce Jorge, Jorge Iralde. Come, 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 Come on, buddy. Come on, Jorge. Come stand behind in. So, Jorge, uh, we got to talk to Jorge about a couple things today. So, first of all, he and his family um, serve all the time. So, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then also, let's start off with, you just got back from a mission trip. So, yep. tell us a little bit about the mission trip to, I'll let you fill the whole thing in. Sure, absolutely. So, yeah, we, we uh just got back from a mission trip to uh, Guatemala. We went to uh, assist the uh, Buena Vista Soccer Academy. Clint and I were there together. Um, it was a baby. roommates. Roommate. That's right. Roommates. Great time. Um, listen, we were there. The Holy Spirit was with us. The Holy Spirit moved us. Just doing life with the kids that were down there. The uh, the mission family that was down there. It was just an amazing time. So um, looking forward to going again. Hopefully, we're planning our trip for next year. And uh, just excited. It was just awesome. I had so much. So much was poured into me. Um, that I just I gained so much from that experience. So I appreciate being around guys like you and uh, and the rest of the team that was down there. So it was amazing. It was a good time. So good. Yep. Yeah. So tell, good. Us a little, tell us about, about serving. Where are you serving? So today? Uh, today we're serving over here at Guest Experience. Uh, I'll be here in the uh, sanctuary here and uh, just having a good time, just greeting people on the way in. And uh, yeah, that's it. Just what about to, kids? You guys serving kids too, right? We serving kids. Yeah, we yep. do kids as well, and just love it. Just love it. Just meeting the families, meeting the kids that come in, and and uh, yeah, just having a smile on our face when people come in, and try to have uh, you know a good positive approach as they're coming in and having a good time. Yeah, so good, man. This family is like jack of all trades and master of everything that they do. So yeah, man. These guys so so, so a couple of, so so Jorge and his wife Laura, and they got two kids, Gabby and Christian. And uh, Gabby's in our middle school uh, ministry. She's awesome. And Christian's like one of the most fun kids all ever. So, but just so an incredible good. family. He's so so awesome. look, we'd love to have you get involved serving, just like this, these guys do. And so, yeah. I, I know that I said the biggest win for me going on the mission trip was was Jorge. More than even being there with the other kids and all that stuff. So you're from, originally from Ecuador, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. So Jorge is uh, lingual in the Espanol. All right. <laughs> so and <laughs> which we are which not. Which we are not. <laughs> but Jorge was like he was in his element, man. It was it was incredible just the way he interacted with the kids and the coaches and and uh, so it was an I said then when we talked about it afterwards like what was your biggest win I was like by far it was Jorge and just being there with you so you poured into me man you blessed me by my being there uh, as well so appreciate you man we love yeah, man. you man. you have a great day hey let's give it up for Jorge yeah, all man. right I'll see you. Yeah, and so as we, we wrap up Virtual Lobby this morning, we just wanted to share with you guys um, the building update right now. Things are moving. The building is, is gutted. It's crazy. It looks amazing inside. Um, there's no walls. It's wide open right now. Construction, uh, construction is about to begin. We've got some, our contractors are getting things laid out and getting everything ready, but we cannot wait to see what God is going to do through this next process now and the next chapter of this process that this uh, this build out for us and and as we are looking forward to that and and moving forward to the final day when we get to have experiences in there we are praying and continuing to just see what God does by raising our uh, the, the capital for it um, the goal is a, is one million dollars that big one million dollar um, final number to be able to complete this entire project but man we are so thankful for every single one of you as you are faithfully giving every week to our kingdom builders who are giving even above and beyond and and man it's 
unbelievable to see what God has done, what God is doing now, and even more exciting to see what God's going to do in the future of this project. So um, we love you. You got any last words? Yeah, man. Hey, just say again, Pentecost Sunday. So be ready, man. God's yeah. going to show up. God's spirit's in this place. We're going to have an incredible, incredible day. Stay tuned. We love you. Have a fantastic day.
We want to thank you guys for joining in worship today and uh, just spend some time to say hello, hug some necks, and, uh, and for those of you guys that are online, make sure to check in, make sure we know that you're here today, and uh, we bless your name. Amen. to Reverb Church. We are so happy you are here. If this is your first, second, or third time with us, whether you're joining us online or in person, you are our VIP. If that's you, text Reverb VIP to the number 94000. We would love to connect with you and help you get plugged in at Reverb Church. Come see us at the Next Steps area after the experience for your free gift. We are a church that is generous at heart and in practice. So now is the time to bring your tithes and offerings as part of our worship. You can give online, via text, or use the white buckets at the front of the auditorium. For online giving, visit our website or text the number below. You are also invited to take your next step in giving by becoming a Kingdom Builder. Kingdom Builders are those that serve and give above regular tithes and offerings. Our goal for this year is to raise $1 million to complete our building projects, fund life-giving local, national, and international projects, and financing church planning across the U.S. For more information, visit www.reverb.church slash Kingdom Builders. Hey, middle schoolers, now is the time to go to your very own experience. Our youth leaders are at the back waiting for you. Parents, don't forget that we have something for your students every Wednesday and Sunday night. Visit our website for all the details. Thank you for joining us this Sunday, either in person or wherever you are watching from. Let's keep passionately connecting people to an authentic life in Christ. Good morning, Reverb Church. How are we feeling, everybody? Awesome. I love it. 
Don't you just love being in the house of God, man? It's just awesome. My name is Gabe, and I am our campus pastor here at Reverb Church, and so glad that you decided to come. I just want to reiterate, if you are a first, second, or third-time guest, we are so glad that you are here. Why don't we give it up for all first, second, third-time guests today? We're not going to make you stand up or come forward or anything like that, but we do want to connect with you, and so that's why we ask you to text Reverb VIP to 94000. Just a simple way for us to connect with you and make sure we're doing our part to welcome you into this family. And I just want to say welcome home. Welcome home. I want to do a quick thing today. Today's going to be a little bit different for this portion of our time together because if you are on our text uh, chain and all that kind of stuff, if you're receiving notifications from Reverb Church via text, you got a text today saying, hey, download the Reverb Church app. And that app is called Church Center App, okay? And so if you got that, um, just go ahead and click on that link. You can download it either with Android or iPhone. We're going to do a live demonstration today of this app. Are you guys ready for this? I don't know if they're ready yet. They're going to they're gonna be ready here in just a second. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that. We made it. All right, so here's where it is. So it's first thing you do when you open the app. You see all these wonderful churches, awesome churches in our community. Let's give it up for Church on the Rock. Let's give it up for Turning Point, Common House, Bridge of Life, Creekside Christian. We love these churches. Love these churches. So you can see those in there too. Uh, but we're going to click on Reverb Church right there at the top, right? And look, it says, this is my church. So I just click on, this is my church. It says, hey, put in your text, your, your, your number. It sends you a little code. You put the number in there. And then boom, bada bing, bada boom, you are logged in as Pastor Gabe. At least I am right now. So we're going to enable the face ID. We're, we're there. This is the home page of what you would see whenever you open up the app. Pretty cool, right? Um, so it's really simple. There's a lot of little things that you can click on the very home page. But I want to draw your attention to the bottom of the screen. So the bottom of the screen there, you have uh, several different tabs. The first one we're going to talk about is regroups. Who loves regroups? Who loves being a part of regroups? I do. So you can actually find a group. You can click right there where it says winter 2021. I know, do we even have winter in Florida? Why do we call it that? I'm not sure. We're going to do it. Um, So anyway, you can sift through all these different amazing groups to be a part of, and you can look at actually the groups that you're in. So here we go. Here's Steve and Maddie. Steve and Maddie, who's just leading worship. He was in my group. He's like, I finally got the book. It was three weeks after our group started. He finally got the book. If you know Steve and Maddie, that's just kind of how it goes. But uh, so anyway, amazing things. You can go through the regroups. You can chat within the regroups, uh, see the event times, all of that events, speaking of, we always tell everyone, hey, be a part of these events. Go to our website. Click on the events tab. All you have to do is just tap on the events tab at the very bottom and check out all these things coming up. We have these reach events. And then say you wanted to sign up for beach baptism, you just tap it. And there's all the details. And then you're already logged in. So guess what? All you do is hit register. It takes you to register this register page. You select who from your family is going to be there. And there you go. Super simple. Now, giving. We, we talked about in the video. I just want to commend you, church, first and foremost, for how faithful you are in obedience in this area. It's unbelievable. I've been a part of a lot of churches, and you guys take the cake. And it's because you get it. You understand why we give. It's not just out of a duty. It's because God's called us to something, right? So uh, I just want to commend you on that. But if you're like, hey, I don't know where to go to give, and is it online? Do I text? If you go through the app, super simple. You just click give online, and there it is. All the way to the right, you'll see that uh, says more with the three little dots. You can actually take our fast forward class on the app. So if you are new to, to Reverb Church and you're like, hey, how do I get involved here? Fast forward is that step for you. It's super simple right there. You can sign up to serve on a team right here. You can actually read the step Bible plan, the way we read the Bible together as a church, right from the app. So. Come on, everybody. It's really, really easy, but we tried to make it simple for you. And then also at the very bottom, you can actually click on watch all of our Sunday sermons, all of our online kids media, all of our youth media is right there on that tab as well. And so make sure that you check that out. Now, why do I have this iPad on stage? Check in. Check in is where it's at. So you can actually check in your kids before you come to church. Who loves standing in lines? Anybody love standing in line? I don't love standing in line. So Here's what we want you to do. Click on Reverb Kids right there. Now, check this out. Here's my kids. I have already, (laughs) my twins aren't born yet, okay? But in the system right now, they're three months old so that I can check them into Dreamers right now. So baby A, Beaten Ball, and baby B, Beaten Ball. We we haven't announced the names yet, so that's why they're baby A and baby B. And then all it is right there. So it says they're logging into 9 a.m. Dreamers. I just hit next, and it gives me this amazing QR code. You guys see the QR code? Now watch this. So on the check-in, at the self-check-in area in the, in the uh, lobby over there, you actually have this screen. Now, I'm just going to go right back. Oh, it's not liking me. It's not liking me. There it is. 
the light was weird. Here we go. Now check-ins were successful. Now the amazing thing is it printed out in the kids' hallway. Those tickets are already there. My kids' tickets are already there. And then I have this amazing barcode. So any parents ever lost the barcode that you use to get your kids out? And you're like, I swear, I'm that parent. I am their parent. Look, they're calling me daddy. Uh, you have it here on your phone. So even if you lose the tag, you have the number. Come on, everybody. How easy is that? So what does this mean for me? Why, why are we doing all this? It's because we want you to get connected. We want you to get connected. And again, the app is just simply a tool, but we have to take those steps, right? Next steps are such a big deal here at Reverb Church. You have that card that's even right there on your seat. It says next steps. We want you to get connected because life is better done together. And so when you are a part of this church, we're just trying to give you all the tools you can uh, to, to take advantage of it. Why don't we stand up? We're going to pray. We're going to thank God because now's the time of our service where we actually do give, where we bring our best. And so I want to just pray over those that are giving today. If you are new to this church and you're like, hey, I've never done that before, I want to encourage you to take that step. Take the step. God is always faithful. He's always going to be there for you. So let's pray right now. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory and all the praise because, Lord, you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. And so today, God, I pray that you would be with us in this place. Every single person who is giving, every single person who is trusting you today with their finances, God, I pray that you would bless them above and beyond all they could hope, ask, or imagine. And Lord, we thank you for this time that we have even to sing one more song before the word is preached today. Lord, right now we give you everything we've got. We surrender our hearts church, if that's you right now and you're just ready to surrender your hearts, so would you just lift your hands to heaven right now and say, God, I'm here to meet with you. God, I'm here. I'm surrendering to you. God, there's nothing else I would rather do than be in your presence. And God, that's exactly why we're here, because we want to meet with the living God. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Come on, let's worship everybody. Show. Sure. 
something very special for us in this moment you know Moses they would they, they sit this they had this tent of meeting that, that Moses would go to and he would walk out and he says Lord if your presence won't go with me I don't want to go anywhere that you're not that you're not there and I just believe that right now the presence of God is here in this room and I don't know about you but I don't want to go anywhere without the presence of the Lord in my life and listen, right now I believe that there are some situations and some circumstances that we need the presence of God just to come and just to fill us up. So why don't we do this right now? Why don't we close our eyes? And why don't we come in anticipation of what God wants to do in this room? Let's lift up our hands. And God, right now we pray that you would fill us up. God, without your presence, we don't want to go anywhere. And so, Father, we thank you that you never leave us. You never forsake us. You're right there in the middle of everything that is going on. And so, Father, right now, would you meet us in this place? And, Lord, we're praying that chains would fall. And, God, that right now knees will bow. And right now tongues will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So today, we just praise you right now. And we thank you right now. And come on, let's just begin right now. Just begin singing that. Let's just begin just calling out to the Lord. Jesus, you change everything. You're the one right now in the middle of our circumstance, turning it around. Come on, hope found. Hope found. Come on, does he change it? Come on, church. He changes it. Come on, let's go. Change. Come on.
He's worthy. Father, we thank you that you are ready to change and transform and you are transforming lives even this very moment. We thank you, God, that by your presence, Lord, we are shaped and changed, never to be the same again. And so we gather as the body of believers right here in this room. God, you stir in our hearts and you prepare us for all that you have for us. So right now we get all of our eyes on Jesus. Today we get all of our eyes on Jesus. Today we get all of our eyes on Jesus to make much of him in this house. And God, we give you praise today. We give you honor. We give you glory. Come on, church. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's make one more praise offering to our God. We praise you, Lord. Wow. Wow. Chastity, thank you. Thank you, team, for ushering in the presence of the Lord in this house. I don't know about you, but I came ready to meet with God today. I came ready. I was hungry to get into the house of God today. Hey, if you've got a Bible, go ahead and grab it out. Grab your cell phone, uh, whatever, whatever Bible device you have, and go to 1 John chapter 2 is where we're going to be today. 1 John chapter 2. And if you'll remain standing, we're going to read quickly, and then we'll, we'll get you to your seat. But man, we just want to welcome you. So glad that you're here. So excited to be in the house of God today. I don't know if you've sensed it, but over the last several months, we've just been seeing God do extraordinary things. There's just been a presence, a new fresh fire in the house of God. And today we're going to continue in, in this collection of sermons that, that we're finding in 1 John. And, and, and it's interesting because what John is really trying to do is get the believer to live like they're following Jesus. And today, uh, it, it's, it takes an interesting turn, so we're going we're gonna to dive into this together. But 1 John chapter 2, he begins to talk about a spirit that is active in the world, and we've been talking about this, this world system, this system that is pulling at our soul, this system that is, that is pulling at the church. And so today, what I, what I want you to do is I, I want you to think about where you are in your walk with God. Are you, are you at a place where you've never been before with God? Are you in a, in a sweet spot with the Lord? Are you at a place where maybe you look back and you remember the glory days, okay? What I would say is that the Lord wants to meet with us fresh and new, even in this moment. He wants to meet with us fresh and new, even in this moment. And if we could get our eyes on Jesus... If we could just get our eyes off of our situation, because this is what happens. So many times we get our eyes on what is right in front of us, and God's saying, lift your eyes. Lift your eyes. Lift your eyes. You know, I don't want to, I never want to live my life in the past and go, man, I, I used to love Jesus. I was on fire for God. No, what about today? That's what the Lord wants to do in this room. I just believe that, that right now that God wants to do something fresh and something new. And so as we continue in this, uh, in this, in this series, uh, in this collection of sermons called In the Light, I want to read this uh, scripture to you. I just believe that the Lord uh, wants to bless us and prepare us for the days that are ahead. It says this in, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that is the last hour. And they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, that it might become plain that they are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One. Guys, we've been anointed by the Holy Spirit, and you all have knowledge. And I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, who he denies the Father and the Son. And no one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning do what? Abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us. What? Eternal 
life. And I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you received from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it is taught, abide in him. This is the word of the Lord. Are you ready? Church, are you ready? Come on, Father, we love you and thank you right now for all that you're doing. God, we thank you for this word that is for today. It is in season for us to hear as a body of believers. Father, we thank you that you've called people in from all over the city, the north, the south, the east, and the west. And Father, even for our family that's online right now, Father, we pray that in living rooms and in workplaces and cars, as people are driving and right here at Pasetti Bay Middle School, God, that you would show up in a powerful way, transform us from the inside out. Today, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. It belongs to you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Hey, guys, give somebody a high five and have a seat. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate you so much. Hey, listen, I got a weird name for this message. Um, but if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Uh, many of you guys will get it if you were born in the 70s, 80s. I've been in that kick for what, I don't know why, but been living in that moment, just kind of riding out of that heart, I don't know why, but the title of today's message is Drinking the Kool-Aid. Drinking the Kool-Aid. I don't know about you, but I grew up drinking Kool-Aid. How many of you guys uh, yeah, you grew, up, grew up drinking Kool-Aid, man? Uh, cherry, honestly, cherry was my favorite Kool-Aid. I don't know why, but I love Kool-Aid. My mom, I felt like my mom uh, put a half a bag Five-pound bag of sugar in my Kool-Aid. I asked her this week. I said, Mom, I'm going to be talking about Kool-Aid. Any of y'all young people even know what Kool-Aid is? Yeah, all right, all right. We know what Kool-Aid is. I grew up drinking Tang, too, but we're going to stick with Kool-Aid. All right, all the astronauts in the house. Listen, but I, I asked my mom this week. I was like, Mom, didn't you put like a, I mean, like, I promise you, I thought she put a half a bag of sugar in there. She says, no, son, I put about a cup. But I'm telling you, it was enough to get you rolling. But somehow, culturally, we've picked up this idea in this phrase of drinking the Kool-Aid. I think a lot of it came out of Jonesville when they, when they were drinking the Kool-Aid and it, was not a good, it, was, it wasn't a good thing, man. A lot of cult leaders, all that fun stuff. But listen, I wanted to define this because if you've never heard that term before, uh, drinking the Kool-Aid is an expression used to refer to a person who believes in possibly doomed or a dangerous idea or doctrine. It's when someone is embracing something that is not good for their soul, that is not bringing them closer to Jesus, that is not actually truth. It's a false doctrine. It goes on, it says, and it also refers to someone accepting an idea or changing a preference. Now watch this. Due to popularity, due to it being a peer pressure. Anybody ever made a decision because of peer pressure? All of us. Or... You were just so persuaded, like they were so suave that they got you to believe whatever it is that they wanted you to believe. It's interesting because drinking the Kool-Aid is a part of this culture. All the time we turn around and somebody we say is drinking the Kool-Aid. They're, they're picking up on things, nuances, things that have nothing to do with God, have nothing to do with his word, have nothing to do with holiness, greatness, has nothing to do with anything, has nothing to do with the truth, but we're picking up dogma and doctrine everywhere that we go. And that's what we've been talking about. And this is exactly what is happening in John's days. He's penning this letter to who? The church. John is writing this letter to the church. And it's crazy because these guys, he's just warning these followers. He's like, listen, don't drink the Kool-Aid. There were a group of people that were actually, they were once following Jesus. And then they had been deceived in believing false doctrines. And this is John's warning. This is John's warning. And so what I want you to see is I want you to see this in the Scriptures. We're going to look at this. This is in, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. We're going to stop here for a minute. He says, children... It is the what? The last hour. 
I need to stop here and I need to get in the weeds just for a minute, okay? Because if I don't get in the weeds just for a minute, then I think that we're gonna, we're gonna miss what God is trying to do. Most people believe, most people believe, most Christians today believe that Jesus is coming back soon. Okay, most people believe that. And I'm not saying, listen, what, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to live today as if Christ is coming back today, right? This hour, how are we supposed to live our life? We're supposed to live on mission all the time because we don't know the time or the hour. But what I want you to see is that most people believe he's coming back today. But John said this 2,000 years ago. He said, this is the last hour. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? See, the New Testament, the message of the New Testament is this, is that when Christ came, we entered the last days. When Christ came to usher in his kingdom, we begin to live in, in the last days. You know, we had the law, we came through the law, and we, 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 we were following the law, and then Christ came, and he laid down his life for you and for me, and when he said it is finished, and he rose from death to life on the third day, we entered into the last days. We moved and positioned ourselves into the last days. That just means that we are supposed to be about Jesus, for Jesus, all the time, everywhere that we go. The Bible speaks to the last hour. It does. In Acts chapter 2, it says this. Acts 2, 16 and 17. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. We all love this one. In fact, it's Pentecost Sunday, everybody. Look out. All bets are off today. Verse 17. And in the last days, what days are we in? We're in the last days. How long are we going to be here? We don't know. 10,000 years from now, we may still be in the last days of Christ. Now, I know some of y'all are like, no, now. (laughs) I got to pay my mortgage next week, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Whatever it is. (laughs) In the last days, it shall be God declares that I will pour out my spirit. On all flesh. How many guys know God's pouring out his spirit even in this house today? He is pouring out his spirit even in our in our lives today. Hebrews chapter one, verse one and two says this. The writer of Hebrews says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, the old testament, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So you and I, we don't know the time nor the day. But today, we live as if it is going to be today. That's why we always say, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. When you hear the message of the gospel today, when you hear how Jesus lived and and he, he died in your place for your sins, when you hear that message of hope that he forgives all of our past and all of our shame, when we hear that, today is the day of salvation. We don't wait because we don't know. It's so important. So in 1 John chapter 2, this is what I want us to see, verse 18. It says, children, it is the last hour. He's preparing their minds to live a different way. He's preparing them to stop looking at what people are saying here, but to go back and remember what Jesus taught them. He says, children, it's the last hour. And as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming, and now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour hour. John's view of the end time seems to be that there is a singular antichrist coming. But right now, John is saying that there is the spirit of the antichrist already in the world. Now, we spent a lot of time last week talking about the world system and and all of those things. I want to encourage you, if you missed last week, you got to go back because we were talking about the world system that is pulling at our soul and culture and everywhere that we go. And so, John is literally experiencing in this season what Jesus warned the disciples of in Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. What did Jesus tell them? What was Jesus warning us about? He says, well, for many, many what? Many antichrists, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. And they will lead they will bring their dogma. They will bring their false doctrines. They will talk about G- they will talk- Jesus saying, they're going to talk about me like I'm not even who I'm supposed to be. They're going to say things about me that aren't true, and they're going to try to lead many 
astray. And so the spirit of the Antichrist is running rampant. It's running rampant in our culture. It's running rampant everywhere that we turn. And and I want to encourage you today is that this is why we need the word of God. That's where I'm going today. Like, it's no longer can we go by life not being in our word. We cannot, there's, we, listen guys, if, if you're waiting till Sunday to get the word of God, we, are, we have waited way too long. If, if we're waiting for, for, for someone to feed, like force feed us the word of God, like if 1 John 2 this week is the first time you've heard the word of God, guys, we're in trouble. We're in trouble as the church. We're in trouble as a people. And this is what John is getting at. He wants us to open up our eyes to see that there is a supernatural work of the enemy happening all around us. And he wants us to wake up. And listen, as the body of Christ, what God is calling us to do is what? It's to know him, to love him, and to walk close with him. Because when we do that, our ears perk up. When we hear things that are not of God, when, we, when, when someone tries to get us to drink the Kool-Aid, we don't just accept it as truth. We actually walk in it, and we know that, that God is guarding our hearts. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 19 says this. The Antichrist went out from us. He's saying they, they left following the followers of Jesus. They left that group. They left what, what, was, what was sound doctrine. They just took off and they left from us. But then John just makes it clear. The reason that they left is because they were not of us. This is a harsh reality. This is why Jesus says, there will be people that stand before me and go, Lord, Lord. Did we not? And then they just had a list of things, but they never knew him. They never walked with him. They were never close with him. They were not in relationship. They didn't have the intimacy with God. They knew all the right stuff here, but it was never touching them here. This is the danger. He says that they were not from us. For if they had been, I love this, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. What's he saying there? He's saying, if they had been with us, they would have continued in the truth of the gospel. They would have continued in the truth of what Jesus taught us. They would have stayed in the fold, and they would have continued on. But it goes on, it says, but they went out. That it might become plain that they are not of us. What's John saying here? What's John saying here? I thought about use, not using these words, but this is the truth of it. They unmasked their true identity. They took off the mask. Anybody ever walked around somebody and you just, man, everything about them looked and seemed like they were a follower of Jesus. I mean, like everything, I mean, they knew the Christian ease, which guys, we got to ease up, okay? Like, They knew how to say it. They knew what to say in the right moment. They even knew how to pray. But in the moment, they they when it was when the rubber meeted the road or it got real tough or tough times came, what happened? They unmasked their true identity and everyone was able to see who they really were. Ever know anybody like that? There are two important truths I want you to see. And what John is writing to us today, two two key things. Because here's what I could do today. I could come up and I could give you some crazy great life principle. But in this moment, I feel like as as an under-shepherd under Jesus right now, I am called to protect you from the voices that are in this city, that are in our world so that we can walk in this newness that God is calling us to, so that we can walk in the truth of the gospel, that we can walk in who God is, that we can walk in his love and walk in his truth so that other people that are captive right now can be set free in Jesus' name. That's what we're called to in this moment. So the first thing that I want us to see in this this group of texts is this. The first verse, this verse speaks of an unsaved person. 
But this unsaved person has mentally subscribed. They have it here. They, they, they can understand uh, here, not here. They can understand mentally the doctrines of the Christian faith. But, watch this, they reject true doctrine while often remaining with the organization of the visible church and posing as a Christian. That's what he's saying. They were not of us. They're walking around. They're talking the language. But when it comes to true doctrine, when it comes to really knowing the truth, when it comes to actually living it out, John's saying they were not of us. They have subscribed. They love the community. How many of you guys have ever seen that? They love just being around people. It's all about the people. Didn't you know this is all about the people? Really? I mean, I love community, and I love that, man, listen, there's more high fives and hugs on a Sunday here at Reverb Church, and you're going to get everywhere all week long. But it's not about the high fives and the hugs. It's about equipping you to go out and be who God has called you to be. This is what it is. And, and guys, they have it here, and they love community, but when they hear hard things, how many of you guys know Jesus said tough stuff? At one point in time, Jesus says, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, and 5,000 men just went psh, gone. It was, just, it was just the 12 again. I mean, they were having revival. And Jesus said, one tough thing, the crowd's left. Because it wasn't fun anymore. <laughs> How many, who sold you the bill of goods that being a Christian is just all fun? <laughs> Games. Not me. They were not of us. And John's like, hey, listen, they got it here. No transformation here. The second thing that this, this verse actually illuminates, I love this, is that it, it actually illuminates the doctrine of perseverance of the saints. Those who are truly born again will endure. It doesn't mean we're not going to go through hard times. Anybody been through a hard time lately? Okay. Anybody went through a hard time last night? Okay, right. Man, we all, we're all going to go through hard times. We're all going to struggle and wrestle in our faith. Man, I'm not saying we live perfect. I'm just saying that there are, there's something about the perseverance of the believer. That means I'm not going to give up. That means I'm going to keep running to the cross. That means I'm going to keep running to Jesus when things get tough. What am I going to do? I'm going to run to Jesus. That's what we do. It's the perseverance of the saints until when? Until the end. Until we take our last breath, until Jesus comes back. Whatever that looks like, this is what we do. Jesus says this in, in Matthew 24. I want you to see this. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. You and I, you know what? We're being saved every single day. You and I are being saved every single day. God is moving us. We had a, a moment in time when he breathed his spirit in us. But you and I, guess what? Jesus is my Savior today. Guess what? He's going to be my Savior tomorrow. Yeah. And those who persevere to the end. I, I think about the parable of the seed and the sower. The people get excited. I've seen this over and over. Had, you know had the privilege of being in ministry 25 years. And what have I seen? I've seen people get super excited about, about faith in God. And just a few weeks later, where, where were they? What happened? Where did it go? Is it possible? Is it possible that they were not from us? Or is it possible that God is going to do a genuine work later? Yes, both answers are true. But those who endure to the end will be saved, Jesus says. So how possible, how is it possible for someone to be led astray to drink the Kool-Aid of false doctrines and Satan's lies? I'm going to tell you the truth. Today, we need to be on guard. Why? Because there's so much out there. Guys, there's, when someone says that they're a follower of God, that could be one of many. When someone says that I'm a follower of Jesus, can I tell you, 
Even in that case, when we get it all the way down to the Savior, even in that moment, there are still people that say, there are still false doctrines and still false religions out there that, that claim Jesus, but they're not looking at the same Jesus that's in my Bible. They've added to. They've taken from. we got to be careful. So how do we know? How do we know? How do we know? When someone... When someone has no theological depth and no vital experience of the Holy Spirit, when when someone doesn't know the word, when we don't get in our word, that's why, guys, I'm telling you, it's so important, so important, so important. What are you reading? Church, what are we reading? How are we getting in God's word? If we don't read God's word, we don't know what God's word says. So how do we drink the Kool-Aid? It's when we have no theological depth. It is, it's when we have no vital experience of the Holy Spirit. Guess what they'll do? They'll drink whatever is poured in their cup, and they will celebrate it as the best drink ever. Because we don't know the difference. We don't know the difference. It, it's, it's that idea of being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And what we do is because we don't know the difference, we celebrate it. And then we get so far down the rabbit hole, we're no, like you can't even see the truth from the lie anymore. And it's because we get to the place where we've stopped going to the source. Guys, right here, can I just tell you, this is the source. This is the source of all truth. This is the source of all life. Jesus wants us so deep, so deep inside of his word. You want your marriage fixed? Right here. You want your relationships fixed? Right here. You got a financial problem? Right here. But but we're not running here. We're waiting for someone else to tell us what we believe. Can I tell you, like, listen, for me, you should test me. Don't drink the Brian Lamoureux Kool-Aid, everybody. <laughs> it's got lots of sugar in it. <laughs> now, we're, we're sugar-free in here. <laughs> Some people are like, it, need, it could have been sweeter. <laughs> you could have been nicer, <laughs> right? No, but listen, seriously, that's why, man, when, when, we, when we hear God's word, we should test it, test it, test it. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I love movies. I love movies. One of my favorite movies one of my favorite movies, and, and again, this is, it's a political movie, so I'm just going to mention it, okay? So don't hate. Just don't hate. Just bear with me because there was a quote in this. One of my favorite movies is The American President with Michael Douglas and Michael J. Fox. I love this movie. Every time it's on, I stop and I'll watch it. Why? Because there's so many great quotes that came out of it. And one of my favorite quotes, I'm going to read this to you because I don't want you to miss this because I think it's so important to talk about what we're talking about today. Because if we don't know the truth, we will just accept anything that is out there. I want you to see this. Uh, uh, Michael Fox, this is what he says. He says, people want leadership, Mr. President. They are so thirsty for it. They will crawl through the desert toward a mirage. And when they discover there is no water, they will drink the sand. Now watch what Michael Douglas says. I love this. He says, Lewis, people don't drink the sand because they're thirsty for it. They drink the sand because they can't tell the difference. And I'm telling you guys, this is the gospel. People do not know the difference, so they just take it on board. And they go, I'm going to live my life according to what culture is saying, not according to what God's word is saying. And that's why, guys, we're always going to feel the pressure. Let me just say this. We are always going to feel the pressure to, to want to cave into culture because they think that we hate them. We don't hate them. We hate the sin that is going on in their life. We hate what is going on around them. And and, and we're just, our hearts break. Our hearts should break for people that are lost drinking in the Kool-Aid. We never turn and go, man, I can't believe. And we say this all the time at Reverb Church. We never point the finger and go, I can't believe this is how you're behaving. Listen, if they've not been touched by the presence and the spirit of the living God, this is how they're always going to be. But in the moment that their life is changed and touched by Jesus Christ, everything changes. Everything changes in our world. And so we get upset, but we want to cave because we want to be accepted here. 
But if we're accepted here and the world loves us here, guess what? The Lord, we're breaking his heart. And it may be, it may be a moment, hey, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me. I, never, I know this, this sounds so tough. But either we are living in the light of the truth of the gospel that he has given us, his word, or we are living for the world. And we are adopting all that they believe. You know how much culture has changed over every generation? Do you think what we're going through is new? Paul wrote about it in Romans 1. Read it. 2,000 years ago. Nothing has changed. The word of God is always timely, and the word of God is always timeless. It's not for, oh, well, I can't, I can't subscribe to this here in this culture. No, it's just truth in every generation. It's truth in every generation. Today, I want us to get to that place where we understand that the word of God is our guardian. It's life. Can you tell the difference between God's word and what Satan is trying to get us to drink? Can you tell the difference? Because that's, that's where we've got to get and if you're not there yet, come on. The, the, the Lord, he, he loves you so much. He wants to get you onto that path. He wants to get you into that place. And here at Reverb Church, we want to help you get there. We want to help disciple you. We want to walk with you. Dr. John Piper, he says it this way. He says, the word of God and the spirit of God are our only hope for stability in a world filled with antichrists. The word of God and the spirit of God. Reverb the word of God and the spirit of God. The word of God and the spirit of God. See, he didn't leave us by ourselves. He says, oh, I'm sending the promise. And man, that's what Pentecost is all about. He sent the promise 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit. And man, he came in that upper room and he said, hearts on fire. He said, lights on fire and lives on fire. And man, I'm telling you, 3,000 people gave their lives to Christ in one day. Come on, isn't that what we're believing for? But we've got to know the truth. We've got to know the truth. We've got to know the truth. 1 John chapter 2, verse 24 says this. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. That's the word of God in verse 27. But the anointing, the Holy Spirit that you receive from him abides in you. It does abide in you. And you have no need that someone should teach you. What's he saying? That we shouldn't teach each other? We shouldn't have someone teach Doc? No. He's just saying that the Spirit's going to bear witness. If we're walking with God and we know the Word of God, the Spirit of God is going to bear witness with what is truth and what is false. What is truth and what is false. This word abide this word abide right here is meno, and it is the idea of having an attitude of something, feeling it home inside of you. See, the Holy Spirit, he already lives inside of you, but it's the word of God live inside of you. It needs to feel at home. Having access to every part of your life, having access to everything that I'm trying to hide from God. No, the word of God wants access to it. I'm trying to hide something. I'm like, there's no way, guys, we can't hide anything from God. He knows us inside and out because he loves us and that's what the word of God does it comes in and divides truth and lies heresy and, and true theology it's the word in the Holy Spirit so will you stand to your feet I want to I want to close with this idea and 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 the practical takeaway today what I want you to take away today is I want you, church, to fall in love with the Word of God. Fall in love with the Word of God. Fall in love with the Word of God. He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. Fall in love with the Word of God. Father, right now, we just come to you in the matchless name of Jesus, and we thank you so much for your Word. People gave their lives to bring this to us, and so, Father, we don't, we don't want to become lazy with it at all. We, we really, truly want to hear your voice. God, I pray right now that your voice is the loudest voice in our culture today. 
that you're in our world, God, that Jesus, that your voice is the loudest voice. God, that we would not just subject ourselves to to anything that anybody would just bring to us, but God, that we would bring it and there would be a litmus test to your word. God, that we would bring it, we would look at what was said and we would look at your word and we would sign up for your truth. Your truth, not my truth, not what people are pushing as truth. God, but what you say about it, what you say about me, what you say about you, what you say about others. God, that's our desire, is that we would draw closer to you. Come on, if you're in this place today and you just want to draw closer to God and his word, you want to draw closer to his heart, and you just want God to do something fresh and new in this new season, come on, I just believe that God wants to do that today, and I just believe there's going to be a supernatural release on Pentecost Sunday. I just believe that there's going to be a, a supernatural release by his Holy Spirit to cause your heart. You know, one of the things, prayers that I pray, God, cause me to love you even more. Don't be afraid to pray that prayer. Don't be afraid to ask God to cause him to love you, uh, to, for, for you to love him even more. Come on. Today, if that's you and you want to draw near to God, just lift your hands right now in this room. I want to pray for hands and hearts right now. Yeah, hands all over this room. You just want to be closer to God. Father, I thank you for all those that are saying, I want to be closer to you. I want to be close. I just want to know your heart. I want to read more. God, I want to be in your word more. God, I want to, I want to abide in you. God, I pray that for every person right now that's got their hands raised. God, I've got my hands raised right now. God, I want more of you, less of myself, more of you and less of myself. God, that's our desire today. That's our desire. Holy Spirit, pour fresh new wine in this house. God, we desperately need your voice in our life. Today, God, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. You can put your hands down, but I want you to stay in the attitude of prayer right now, in an attitude of prayer right now today. If you would say, hey, Pastor Brian, I've never committed my life to Christ. I've never made a decision for Jesus. I've never said, God, I want you to come into my heart to be my God, be my savior. I've never done that. Before I, in a, in a moment, I'm gonna lead those that are ready to make a decision for Christ in a prayer. But before I do that, I wanna read the words of Jesus in his priestly prayer, Jesus was praying to God the Father on our behalf in this moment that I'm about to read. And I want you to hear the heart of Jesus. Jesus said this in John 17, verse 3, and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God. That means there's one God. His name is Jesus. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, The world's going to tell you there's many paths. The the world's going to tell you that there's many ways to God. And I'm telling you, the Bible is so clear. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He says, no man comes to the Father. No woman comes to the Father except through me. But what I love about Jesus is that he is inclusive and exclusive. He's saying, all those who are weary come to me. But he's also saying, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And I'm just telling you today is the day of salvation for you. If you've never made a decision for Christ today, in just a moment, I want to pray for you. But I'd love to know who I'm about to pray with. If you're online right now, I want you to indicate right now in the chat room and say, Pastor Brian, I'm making a decision for Christ. It's going to be the greatest moment of your life. I'm telling you, Jesus is about to come in and change everything about who you are on the inside. So right now, if that's you and you just know, hey, today's the day of salvation for me. Maybe you've been waiting a long time to make this decision, but today is the day. What I'd love for you to do is right now, just lift your hand and say, hey, Pastor Brian, be bold with faith. Just say, yep, that's me. I'm about to pray. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Anybody else? Just saying yes to God. Just looking all over this room. If you're online, again, indicate in the chat room. Just saying, I'm, I'm saying yes to Jesus. I'm looking all over If you'll just keep that hand up just for a moment while your hand is raised, I'm going to have a friend of mine bring you some information uh, that's very, very important. And then I'm going to pray with you. Come on, church. Can we just right now just begin praying for those that are making this decision for Christ, for those that are saying this prayer? I can't pray it for you, but I just believe God's going to meet you right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I believe in this moment that you died on a cross for me 
And right now, I receive your free gift of salvation. And today I give you my life. Today I give you my heart. And I believe that you died on a cross and that you rose again, sealing this promise of salvation for me. Today I trust in you with my whole heart. And today I give you thanks in this moment for changing my life. I will follow you all the days of my life. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, church. Amen. 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 Come on. Yes. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. In wonder and surrender we fall down. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Let every burning heart be holy ground. Show us. Show us your glory. church you can do better than that for our risen king jesus we love you oh i love it haven't we had an experience in god's presence today come on what an incredible day it's been i want to just give you a couple quick things number one if you were one of those that just said yes to a relationship with god we are so happy for you you have made the absolute best decision in your entire life and as a church we want to walk with you we want to walk with you. So we're going to ask one thing from you is that you would text reverb. Yes. The words reverb. Yes. One word to 94,000 easy way for us to connect with you. And we want to see you at next steps after, uh, our time. Cause we just want to say, Hey, to you want to connect with you to see what's going on, see how we can help you in this, help us do our job as a church, uh, by walking with you. It's going to be a great time. Also remember, remember that we have so many amazing things coming up here at Reverb Church. Remember to download the app, get connected with people. Come on, it's going to be an incredible time in this summer. Groups are starting back up next month. It's going to be an awesome time. So, Reverb Church, we love you so much. Have a blessed week. Get in your word this week, and let's go forth. Amen, amen, and amen. Have a great day, everybody.